We thought we'd show the Strog we weren't to be messed with. After beating them back on Earth, our confidence was high. Maybe too high. Did we plan enough? Did we have all the intel we needed? Our million dollar drop pods were meant to sneak past their planetary defense undetected. But then, the death toll. It was huge. In seconds, thousands gone. Whispers started. Talks of heading back to Earth. We still had more forces, but what use were they if the Strog's defenses were still kicking? Sir, we're stuck in Strogos' atmosphere. Deimos and Phobos are caught in some kind of artificial gravity field. Foxtrot squad's gone, all KIA. Then, something shifted. I remember it clear as day. We all crowded around the windows, saw smoke and fire, the big gun gone. Orders came in fast. Pilots scrambling, ships lifting off, targets lining up. Our guys were still down there, surviving. Heard Bitterman's name on the radio. The bastard was alive, fighting for us. Alone, but not for long. The slipgate we used to get here stopped working. We cheered, thinking it's another win. But our cheers died fast. No quick way home now. Sure, there's hypersleep, but time doesn't stop. What about our families, friends? Who'd still be there after all those years? Would they even wait for us? Didn't take long before we saw not one, but two massive explosions. One where Cerberon was, the other in Strogos' asteroid belt. We heard it clear. Operation Alien Overlord complete. That's the call. Time to end this war. In the aftermath of Operation Alien Overlord, the situation on Strogos is chaotic but ripe with opportunity for Earth's forces. Although it resulted in overwhelming casualties, three Marines stood against the might of the Strog Empire, pulling them down by succeeding in destroying key assets of their forces. However, despite these significant strikes at their core, the war is far from over. The Strog, though weakened, are not vanquished. With their army now leaderless, it's believed to be fragmented, with various warlords scrambling for dominance, each aspiring to become the next ruler of the Strog Empire. So the Macron's dead, eh? The Marine who iced that squib deserves a chest full of medals and a year's R&R. &R. This internal strife opens a crucial opportunity for Earth's forces to ramp up their offensive. During the initial assault, only two Earth cruisers were visible, but in reality, more were strategically positioned just outside Strogos's perimeter, waiting for the right moment to strike. Now, with the path clear, about 80 cruisers, part of the Grand Invasion Fleet, move in to seize control and unleash their remaining troops on the planet's surface. The second wave assault comprises multiple squads, not just troops, but also bolstered by a range of vehicles, including hover tanks, walkers, Trojan APCs and armadillo trucks are visible on the battlefield, which most of them were previously used during Earth invasion. Given the vast scale of the attack, the full documentation of all squads and their members remains incomplete. However, here's what we can deduce from the available information. Each squads bear the name of an animal. Badger, Eagle, Cobra or Warthog squad, to name a few, ranging in various numbers from large groups such as Raven Squad with 63 documented members or smaller teams such as the famous Rhino Squad with 13 members. Rhino Squad, huh? You guys must be pretty badass. Yeah, did Rhino really save Austin back when the Strog attacked Earth? Though few in number, their exceptional skills more than compensate, marking them as one of the most elite marine units in the Earth Armed Forces. Tasked with the most critical and perilous missions, they are deployed into scenarios where the stakes are highest and failure is simply not an option. Yeah, you boys have pulled off all sorts of impossible shit, haven't you? And they're still talking about what Rhino did in Dallas during the Earth invasion. Each member is an expert in his respective field and is trained to the peak of his abilities. I am Alejandro Cortez, Rhino Squad sharpshooter. Several months ago, the squad lost its former commander, Lieutenant Daly. 
but his role was taken over by Lieutenant Voss, known for his remarkable proficiency. On my way, sir. Sledge, you're with me on cleanup detail. At 30 years old, Voss may not be the most physically imposing figure, nor does he carry an air of overt authority. Yet there's an undeniable presence about him that commands respect from even the most headstrong Marine. Little is known about Voss among his squad, as he remains tight-lipped about his past. However, his history holds a harrowing tale of resilience and endurance. Prior to the Earth invasion, during what is known as the Mars Riots, Voss was captured and subjected to six months of relentless torture. Among the cruelties he endured was being repeatedly confined in a coffin and buried alive, leading to severe claustrophobia and recurring nightmares that haunt him to this day. After his rescue, Voss could have taken an honorable discharge. Instead, he chose to re-enlist, and he was eventually given command of Rhino Squad. Voss makes a bold decision to recruit Corporal Matthew Kane, a choice that raises eyebrows within the group. Holy shit! This is some ride, eh, buddy? Who's the new guy? Matthew Kane, one certified badass. A man like Kane could get us killed. Shut the hell up, Strauss. Kane's past is highly regarded, yet maintained as a closely guarded secret. His early life before the events of the war on Strogos is largely unknown, though it's suspected he grew up on the Earth-Moon colony before the onset of the Strog invasion. His military career began with the Global Defense Force and transitioned to the Space Marine Corps of the Terran Coalition of Man, where he rose to the rank of Corporal. Kane finds himself reassigned to the elite Rhino Squad, a move orchestrated by Lieutenant Voss, who sees untapped potential in him. The primary objective of Earth's forces is to establish a foothold and secure a landing site on Strogos. Achieving this would enable the Mobile Command Center, USS Hannibal, to approach the planet safely delivering crucial reinforcements, supplies, and logistical support to bolster the ground offensive. Though the plan seems straightforward, the reality is far more complex and perilous. As the TCM launches its second wave of attack, dropships filled with squads make their descent towards Strogos. The Strog anti-aircraft cannons, while not as colossal as the big gun, are designed to obliterate enemy spacecraft and other significant airborne threats. The Strog's arsenal also includes defense systems equipped with tracking missiles, ideal for targeting faster and smaller targets. The death toll of the battle skyrockets as multiple cruisers, each harboring thousands of crew members, are destroyed, along with several separate dropships succumbing to the Strog's devastating firepower. Clearing out a landing zone for a mobile command center. Among the affected is Rhino Squad. Despite desperate attempts to evade, a guided missile finds its mark, sending the squad ship hurtling towards a crash landing on Strogos. The scene presents a drastic difference compared to the first wave's massacre. The landscape is not just a tableau of destruction and death, but now a violent battleground where Marines are engaged in all-out brutal warfare. On their familiar ground, the Strog forces expose the full extent of their horror. With tactics steeped in terror, they covertly invade areas previously cleared by Marines, leading to merciless ambushes in presumably secured sectors. The composition of the Strog forces bears similarities to those encountered in the first wave with notable changes. The ever-present guards are swiftly reinforced by a familiar yet evolved adversary, the Berserkers. Known for their formidable charges, 
These adversaries have now gained new capabilities. They can launch electric bolts towards their targets from afar and violently pound the ground, generating lethal electric shockwaves. The Marines also encounter an unseen Strog creation, the Grunt. Before their Strogification, these monstrosities seem to descend more from wild beasts than any recognizable humanoid alien. Launching into combat with animalistic rage, they embody the terrifying fusion of primal ferocity and advanced alien technology. They focus on brutal melee warfare, yet are not averse to opening fire with machine guns from a distance. What truly instills dread is their response to injury. Upon being wounded, grunts erupt into a frenzy, their bodies drawing strength from the stroyant in the canisters attached to their limbs and torso. This unholy infusion not only mends their flesh, but also turns their already ferocious melee blows into something far deadlier, demanding immediate and decisive action to neutralize them. That was too close. That thing. The briefing never mentioned a massive strog. Uh, machine. Let's just hope I don't run into it again. Poor guy. He didn't have to help, but he did. I'll make sure your sacrifice wasn't in vain. Well, shit. You're not dead. Lucky for you, Lieutenant Voss was in a hurry to move out. Rhodes wanted to bury you. The LT left orders that everyone's supposed to hook up with the squad ASAP. Transmissions are being jammed, I can't get in touch with HQ, and even nearby signals are garbled. Despite the tumult resembling the first wave invasion, there are still surviving soldiers, providing each other with crucial support. You're needed ASAP. Colonel Westmore's been wounded in the leg. And I've got a Marine here with a collapsed lung. Westmore demanded you. Then he's gonna have to wait. Anderson out. One of the first members of his squad Kane encounters is Jeremiah Anderson a 19-year-old from a wealthy Chicago family. Despite having the means to avoid frontline duty, Anderson chose to serve with Rhino Squad, craving action. Dozens wounded and I'm trying to save the life of the only other medic in this area. Found our pilot about 100 yards from here. Looks like she died instantly. His resilience impresses even Master Sergeant Bidwell, who initially made things tough for Anderson with his rigorous methods. His brutal training regimes have resulted in injuries, but have also prepared the Rhino Squad for the harsh realities of war. I gave him a med pack and sedated him. He'll be okay. Anderson's a good kid, tough as they come. It's a rough break, though. Learned that the cruiser we were on got blown to bits, snagged in a minefield. All 2,200 crewmen, gone. Just like that. Ah, so you did survive. <laughs> I won the bet with Rhodes. Lieutenant Voss stationed me here to guard the flank. But you are to proceed that way and rendezvous with the rest of our squad. So you are alive! Damn! Cortez won the bet! What if I missed? We're just getting started. We gotta take out that air defense cannon, but the Strog Flyers are keeping us pinned down. There's no way to- Sergeant Bidwell, this is Voss. I think I found a way to get at that cannon. Can you reach Kane? Right here, sir. Good. Kane, go to the strong hangers. Viper Squawk will rendezvous with you there. If you can take out the launching base, the flyers won't be a problem. Boss out. You heard the man, Kane. Get to the hangar. Morris, go with him. Move out! Come on! It's go time! Morris, communications expert and veteran in Rhino Squad, is a master in hand-to-hand -hand combat and a natural leader, stepping up when higher-ranking officers are absent. As Kane embarks on its mission, shadowing Sergeant Morris to meet with Viper Squad, they confront a menacing yet familiar adversary, the Gunner. Clad in battle gear and equipped with a nail gun and grenade launcher, this iteration of the enemy, while reminiscent of its predecessor, moves with a ponderous slowness. His firepower now shows signs of diminution, Fewer grenades are launched in each attack, suggesting a subtle yet significant shift in the battlefield's dynamics. Rhino Squad, eh? So what are we gonna do here? Our mission's to clear hostiles out of the hangar so a demolitions team can work safely. 
Unfortunately, comlink signals can't penetrate the rock of this mountain. I suppose I could stay here and relay the comm signals for you guys. That'd be great. Come on, let's go. Here, take this shotgun. It's gonna come in handy real soon. Here I am, the most talented war machine ever trained by the Marine Corps, and I'm kept out of action. Go. Just go. But ice a few freaks for me, would you? The Strog hangars operate on the same principle as old Earth aircraft carriers. Flyers are pretty much thrown out of the hangars like a rock in a kid's slingshot. Strog machinery is an odd combination of high and low tech. I guess once they find something that works, they don't try to improve it. In this moment, the contrast between a lone survivor and a well-coordinated squad becomes truly evident. A robust display of firepower, the ability to distribute the enemy's focus, and crucially, the capacity for mutual aid in healing and armor repair. Damn! Door's locked and it's our only way through. Private squad, this is Morris. HQ's finally located the demolitionist for the hangar. He should be there soon. That window's reinforced glass. It'd take a lot more than our weapons to break it. The armament of Earth's forces showcases a mix of the familiar and the futuristic. Many weapons used by soldiers are reminiscent of those seen during the Earth invasion, alongside others with more advanced, high-tech designs. Bet the eggheads back at HQ would love to get their hands on this baby. Both sides seem to utilize similar weaponry, likely explained by Earth forces having acquired Strog armaments during previous confrontations. It worked! Good job, Kane! Kane and Viper Squad enter the hangar facility and begin their ascent. Upon entering the complex, a remarkable sight unfolds. Shit. No wonder they're giving our infantry so much trouble. Look at the number of flyers they got. Numerous Strog ships line the docks. Some are readying for takeoff, while others are undergoing repairs, with parts being attended to by Strog repair bots. Keep your shit while you're tight. You can bet your ass we aren't going to be welcome here. Reaching the summit, they get an update from Sergeant Morris. Rhodes, the squad's seasoned demolition expert, is en route to obliterate the hangar. However, given the highly volatile nature of the explosives in his possession, he needs the area secured first before he can approach. While details are limited, it's been revealed that Lance Corporal Athena Hayes had a past association with Rhodes. Her bitterness over his inclusion in Rhino Squad hints that she may have sought a similar position, only to end up in the recon team of Operation Alien Overlord instead. Morris, this is Viper Squad. We've made a successful sweep of the area, giving all clear to the demo team. Still alive and kicking, eh, Kane? I'm beginning to see how you made it off that space station. Wait a minute. This is the Corporal Kane? Thought he'd be a lot bigger. Although initially little is revealed about Kane's past during his service with the GDF, the narrative gradually unveils fragments of a dramatic event that occurred during the Earth invasion. Kane, try and keep the Strog off me. These charges I'm carrying don't react well to getting hit by a weapons fire. And just so you know, these puppies go off. They're gonna take out you, me, and half this mountain. The summit of the mountain houses the launch pads and control rooms. Here, flyers are systematically transported from the hangar to one of the two launching bays, where they undergo preparation before deployment, including being fueled from thermally regulated tanks. The fuel is likely a refined or chemically altered form of stroint, which would have been processed or mixed with other components to suit the specific needs of the flyers. Okay, that's one. While neutralizing this hangar would undoubtedly benefit control over this sector, it seems that the Strog possessed many more facilities across the planet. As was previously observed, they had spaceports and multiple hangars both in and outside Cerberon, indicating that this facility represents only a fraction of the overall Strog capabilities dispersed throughout Strogos. That's number two. Come on, Kane. Let's go somewhere safe and we can fire these charges off. Follow me. Come on, let's go see the fireworks. Watch over there, Kane. HQ, charges are prepped to detonate. Detonation in three, two, one. Woo! Yeah! Those hangars are permanently closed for business. Hey, 
Rose, if you kids are done playing around, why don't you send Kane down my way? There's little respite for Kane, as Sergeant Morris immediately calls him to assist in an attack on the anti-aircraft cannon, which has become a viable target now that the disabling of the hangar has halted fighter launches. On his way back, Kane observes that most of the area has already been secured by Raven Squad. This is the first time we've been in a Strog hangar. By studying just one of the consoles is going to keep us busy for months. We've never had the chance to study an undamaged flyer before. Now we have dozens to work with. Wasting no time, they have begun examining enemy equipment. The researchers' comments filled with awe at the Strog technology. Look at the configuration of the turbine. That has to be at least 15% more efficient than anything we have. And see how they designed the fuel intake? Wow. We have to get this to the Hannibal as soon as it lands. This level of access to the Strog's innovations had not been possible during previous encounters. Although the GDF had unveiled significant technology on Earth, it becomes evident that the Strog have developed and created far more, surpassing our most impressive discoveries. So I'm supposed to interface the secondary protocol. Mine, I don't know how to make it any simpler. You have to engage the primary override. But you didn't say that. I shouldn't have to explain the obvious. Do I have to come down there and walk you through it? No, that's not necessary. I'll figure it out. Very well. Strauss out. Rhino Squad, huh? Your private Strauss is about as friendly as a Strog. It is in this setting that Kane first encounters the formidable, the remarkable, the one and only Johann Strauss. Corporal, I refuse to repair this power transfer until I'm assigned additional protection. Strauss, we've been over this. It's not gonna But happen. I am in mortal danger. This area is filled with Strauss. Thank you, Private Strauss. Your grievance is noted. Ah, uh, hello, Corporal Kane. It's good to finally meet you. I am Private Johann Strauss. You have no doubt heard of me. 21 years old, he is a prodigy with one of the most brilliant minds of our era, and he's well aware of his exceptional intellect. I am far too valuable to be left defenseless. There should be a dozen soldiers guarding me. How can they do this to me? To me, Johann Strauss. The war effort cannot afford to have me die. His significant contributions include being part of the team that uncovered the Strog's use of black holes for interstellar travel. I am one of eight humans fluent in Strog. I'm one of four who understand Strog programming. And yet our leaders continue to risk my life on a daily basis. His academic career took a drastic turn after an encounter with General Nathaniel Hastings, which unexpectedly catapulted him to the front lines. What the hell were you doing? Chatting it up with the local Strog women? Come on, let's get back to Rhino Squad. Kane, following Sergeant Morris, teams up with Lieutenant Voss and Sledge to finally make their way to the cannon. Corporal Kane, enjoying your first day with Rhino Squad? Here's something I found you might be able to use. Now that the hangars are out of commission, we have a clear path to the air defense cannon. Let's move! We quickly see why Voss was put in charge of Rhino Squad. He leads his men headfirst into the chaos of the battlefield, a leader who doesn't fear being on the front line. They engage in an intense battle, fighting their way to the control room of the air defense cannon. Give me suppressing fire from that railing. Kane, push forward. Look up. Ah, look. Another stroke will kill. Strong to the left. You stroke don't know when to quit. Watch your word, Marines. Good job, men. Mission accomplished. This is Lieutenant Voss to HQ. The cannon is under Marine control. Geosynchronous orbit and beginning to set. Sir, how are we going to get to the landing zone with that locked surface door in our way? Good point. They use its firepower to blast open a massive door, creating a pathway for the team to the Hannibal's landing zone. Recognizing the need to prevent the weapons use by enemy forces, Voss stays with Sledge and radios Rhodes to come set explosives on the cannon. Corporal Nikolai Slijonovich, a 25-year-old heavy weapons expert, hails from St. Petersburg, Russia. Have you heard the claim to fame of our very own Nikolai Slijonovich? He is the only human ever to have killed a straw with his bare hands. Amidst the chaos of battle, he earned the nickname Sledge. After dismembering a strog, 
and using its limbs to fend off enemy forces, holding the line until reinforcements arrived. kicked off rough. Still, we managed to accomplish our first objective. It cost us a lot of lives, but at least we've got our foot in their door. Now passing through the stratosphere. Breaking procedure has begun. As they draw nearer, they witness Marines being pinned down, trying to hide against the relentless fire of heavy Strog turrets. The Hannibal is now in the troposphere. Landing zone in sight. Hannibal, requesting airstrike on that gun emplacement. We copy that. In a display of sheer power, the Hannibal intervenes, deploying its undercarriage cannons to effortlessly obliterate the enemy fortifications. All right, thanks, Hannibal. Our pleasure. Hang in there, buddy. Help's on the way. Hannibal, this is Raven Squad. We've got an injured Marine who can't be moved. Rods of that, Raven. A medic will be dispatched. You guys go on. I'll stay here. Breaking jets activated. Deploy landing strike. What are you waiting for? Let's get to the ship. Heard something big is being prepared in response to some new intel about the Strog we didn't have before. They feel rushed, but we can't afford to give them time to regroup. The USS Hannibal has landed. I repeat, the Hannibal has landed. Welcome aboard, Marines. I won't lie. I was on edge about how the team would take to me. It's tough, you know. Trusting someone you don't know with your life, especially while being dropped in dangerous territory with a unit as critical as Rhino Squad. But I'm starting to feel like I'm earning their trust, bit by bit. If things keep going this way, I actually believe we can win this war.